Lovely. We're joined here in the beautiful Cardiff City Stadium with Sky Sports commentator Andy Clark. Andy, how are you doing? How are you enjoying the fight week? How are you enjoying this lovely setting here? Yeah, really well, thanks. We, we were just talking, weren't we, about what this holds and you told me 28,000 and you look at how nice and compact it is, all the corners filled in, which they kind of always are in football grounds now, but this, this would be a great place for a fight, wouldn't it? And I was just inquiring as to whether you thought Lauren Price or Joe Cordina could could pack this place out and, and you seem confident that, that they probably could if they were on the same card, which I know there's all sorts of reasons why that couldn't happen currently, but... Um, yeah, boxing in the open air is great. And you look at a day like today, the weather like today, it'd be, it'd be brilliant. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, like you say, I think you'd need the Cordina, Gavin Gwynn, Lauren Price, yeah. decent undercard, maybe some, some fighters from elsewhere to, to really make it happen. But you say they're, they're, they've got that extra special feel about them. The first fight I think that got me into boxing mostly was Josh Warrington, Lee Selby at Ellen Road as a Leeds fan. Stadium fights, are they big? Are they different? Do they just have that extra edge about them, particularly when there's like a football connection like, like with Lauren? Yeah, they do. I've, 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 been, I mean, I've been really lucky. I mean, I'm into double figures with it now, and we've got another one coming up at Crystal Palace in, in mid-June. But the, the really massive ones like... So Wembley, Cardiff, Spurs, I've done, like I think, eight or nine at, at those three. And when it's that big... It is a kind of a different experience because you get this sound from the upper stands, which it's almost like the, dela- the the reaction is slightly delayed, and that kind of like tumbles down from the stands and sort of washes up on ringside almost. It's not that instant reaction you get in an arena, and the noise does kind of dissipate out into the night air, and you get this kind of constant hum in the background, a bit like if you're watching, if you go to like cricket or something like that, maybe it's it's like people are there, but they're not really watching. Not everybody, anyway. So it is, it is. A, th- those are kind of they're great, um, but also slightly, slightly odd because what people are looking at is basically the kind of putting. It's a centre circle, isn't it? It's not even that big, um, so that's quite a small focus for for such a big place. But the smaller stadiums, it's kind of. I mean, it's almost better in a way. But it's a, it's a sound thing that makes the big difference. In an arena, the sound's just hemmed in. It's got nowhere to go. So I love big arena shows, small arena shows. Any full arena is brilliant because you just get that sound just bouncing around um, and you get a tremendous, tremendous atmosphere. And React Paul Billum Smith, you mentioned obviously Selhurst Park. How good a fight is that? 50 50 domestic clash. There's a little bit of you know, back and forth there. They fought before. How you know exciting is that for for boxer and and just for British boxing as well? Yeah, it's great and 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 it's good that it's a normal Saturday fight night as well. I think um, what they were hoping would was that they would get Boatsy versus Yard done, which I don't think is dead, but but it hasn't happened for that date. And if that was on it, then I'm just assuming it would have been a pay per view. Uh, and now it isn't, uh, which is you know I'm sure boxer are upset about that, but but for everybody else, it's brilliant because. That's a really, really strong Saturday fight night. Um, and it's a rematch. I remember I commentated on the first fight. Not that it really means a lot now, but there's some history there. And I just do think it'll be a good fight. Billum Smith's always in a good fight because he always brings it. Um, people say he's, he's, you know, he's not the hardest to hit. I don't think he's as easy to hit as people make out. But React Paul has got just genuine raw power. Um, I don't see that one letting us down as a as a spectacle although with big punches it's kind of you never really know because quite often they don't really do a lot until they do and then it's over so you can have fights where not much happens because they're looking to try and set something up and pull the trigger and then either they manage to do it and they knock their opponent out or they don't manage to do it and you wonder what they've been doing for 12 rounds like we saw Deontay Wilder do against Joseph Parker for, for, you know, want of a better recent example. So, yeah, but I am confident though. I do think it'll be, I do think it'll be good. Fair enough. I'll pass the mic over to Harry. Let him well, sub in. You were talking about small arena shows. We're obviously here in Cardiff this weekend. Um, how much are you looking forward to seeing Lauren Price in front of her home fans for the first time as a pro? Yeah, really looking forward to it because, you know, it's... Um, when somebody turns pro off the back of a big Olympic win, if you've been on that GB squad for a long time, often you haven't boxed at home for ages. Mm-hmm. Um, I think 
when Josh Kelly turned over after Rio, he went up to the northeast, and it was the first time he boxed at home in like 10 years. Um, because you're just up in Sheffield and you're boxing internationally and you just don't really have the opportunity. So it's great to get her out in front of a home crowd. I would have loved to have seen her make a debut in front of a home crowd. I, I, that would have made all the sense in the world to me. When, when you look at pro debuts, I always look at Michael Condon's and like the theatre at Madison Square Garden, big Irish population in New York, St. Patrick's Day, boom. You know, that was, that was so well done. You know, that's just... That's the dream, um, and he headlined as well. And, and I think, um, like, I don't know why that didn't happen. There's probably loads of really good reasons that I'm not aware of, but, but I think a debut here would have been great. But for the first one to be a world title fight, there's not a lot to complain about there. You were talking about the stadium as well earlier on with Sam. Just look at this now. Lauren Price, I think the ticket sales have been quite good for it. Can you see her may, maybe main event in here in the future? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so, because you, you look at the growth of the, the women's side of the sport, um, and I do feel like that's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, like it does, like it is in, in all sports. That is, that is an unstoppable rising force, um, and, and rightly so. It's, it's, it's been a long time coming. It's been too long coming, probably. Um, but it's happening now. Um, and that will be a big, big moment because we haven't in the UK yet had... A, not everything's about pay-per-view, but we haven't yet had a female headline pay-per-view, for example, and that would be a big, a big moment. I remember when Katie Taylor fought Natasha Jonas. That was, I thought, the best fight on the card, and I wondered whether Sky would gamble on it. But at that point, they felt, from a commercial point of view, it wouldn't sell. Whereas, was it Chisora Parker was headlining that card? I think it was. They felt that that would. Yeah. Um, so the time wasn't quite right, but th that'll be a big thing where they feel like um, a top-level women's fight could carry a, that pay-per-view demand. Uh, we've had plenty headlining. Jo Jonas Mayer was a really good one in January. That sold out the, the Echo in Liverpool pretty much. Taylor Serrano, July as well. Yeah, yeah, that's something again, yeah. I mean, and that, 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 you know, that, that pulled in a great crowd at Madison Square Garden, didn't it, there? their first fight so yeah, we're on the brink of it we're mm -hmm. definitely on the brink of it you talk about there as well pay-per-views obviously last weekend Canelo Alvarez made his return against Hami Munguia what did you make of his performance I thought it was pretty good you know he's um I do feel like he hasn't got that much longer left mm -hmm. just because he's had loads of fights and what is he now 33 34 and he's had 65 fights and he turned pro at 15 and he's had loads of training camps on top of that you look at the, the resume, it's demanding. It takes its toll on you after a while, and it's just a question of how much longer is he, is he really up for it. That, that's what it comes down to, I, I've always felt. It's, people talk about you know, fighters getting old and certain things leaving them and all the rest of it. And obviously, physically, things change as you get older, but I think when you lose that sort of razor's edge of desire to get in there and do it and get up and train every day that that's when you I think the body gives up pretty quickly after your after your mind does you know fighters will always say to you like your body does what your mind will, will tell it to um, in my experience that's not really true uh, <laughs> but because they're elite athletes they it's different for them but once your mind has kind of lost that will to really do it then I think your body just kind of follows and all of a sudden you realize this you've had enough so I don't think he's miles away from that um, but he's still, he's still one of the top guys. Do you reckon a mega fight with Terence Crawford could be on the cards next for him? Yeah, I mean, it's possible, isn't it? I, I don't, I'm not all that keen to see Terence Crawford step up 21 pounds and box at super middleweight because he'll get beaten. I don't see any other possible outcome there. I know he was a big welterweight uh, by the end, and people are talking about super welterweight for him now, but let's say he is a super welterweight. Actually, he's always been a welterweight, so that would be new. And then we saw Charlo step up from super welterweight, a full-blown super welterweight, to super middleweight and an undisputed champion. And that was a complete... Well, it was just a waste of time, wasn't it, mm -hmm. from, a, from a viewing point of view? It wasn't a waste of time for him. He got, he got handsomely paid for it. I don't blame him for doing it. But I, I don't want to see Crawford just get beaten at, at 168 because he's too small. I mean, but having said that, I definitely watch it. 
you talk about Crawford there. Is he your number one pound for pound? Or is a certain Naoi Inoue number one, the monster? For me, for me, it's Crawford because... But having said that, I can't come up with any massively convincing argument as to why it's him because you look at some of the fighters that Inoue's beaten mm-hmm. um, and it's a good, good list. Um, and Crawford's is a good list as well. But I just look at Crawford and maybe because he's been around longer, probably, mm-hmm. and, I've, and, I've, and I've seen more of him, I would probably say him. But that is some battle, isn't it, for, for who's pound for pound best out of those two because in a way it's got time on its side. And if he steps up to featherweight, I mean, what I would love to see more than anything else would be in a way box Lomachenko at featherweight because people... Are, I was talking about that in, on yeah. our podcast. That's yeah, fight. it's unbelievable, isn't it? And, and we all know that he's never been a lightweight. Mm-hmm. Can he do featherweight still? I'm guessing he probably could. Um, and that would be that would be absolutely fire. I mean, that'd be absolutely yeah. mega, wouldn't it? Talk about Lomachenko. He's fighting Saturday. Um, is it Saturday or Sunday? Early, Sun- early Sunday, Sunday morning. morning. Yeah. Obviously, Cambosis Junior. Is it a fifty-fifty or is it quite one-sided with Cambosis Junior? I mean, I, I feel like Lomachenko is well capable of winning that fight quite mm-hmm. comfortably. I, I I really like Cambosis. I remember when he came over and boxed Selby. I'd, I'd never seen him before. Um, chatted to him a bit fight week, and I was just really kind of struck by his rock solid confidence, and it, it, it was a genuine confidence too. Like sometimes you can tell whether it's it's sort of bluster and all a bit of a front, but you could tell with him that he, his self belief was unreal, and he boxed well that night. And, and Selby was past his best. Um, uh, I think he would definitely admit that. But the win against Lopez was absolutely massive, massive. I did not see that coming at all. So he's earned everything that he's that he's got, Cambosis, and he will have earned handsomely from those two fights with Haney. And now he's got Lomachenko. So, you know, I tip my hat to him because he always wants massive challenges. But I think there's quite a big gap between a pair of them in terms of technical ability. I mean, the general is between Lomachenko and anyone he boxes. Um, and I really want to see Lomachenko, because he hasn't got too much look, longer left finish with a flourish because he's just so good um, and I don't want him to fall into that category where people suddenly decide that, that he was never that good because I think there's a danger of that happening and that's just I mean it's just nonsense Yeah I'm following on from our Cambosa spoke this morning on the fight and said that he thinks it's a retirement fight for Lomachenko Uh I think Lomachenko maybe goes into a, a slight favourite, but if he loses Sunday morning, do you think that could be the final fight for him? Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, he's not going to want to... He'll know if it's, time, if it's time to go, because they always know. They're kind of... They're like addicts fighters in a way. You know, they, People talk about the addicts being the last one to realise that they've, that they've got a problem, and it's, it's, not, you know, it's, it's not true. They're the first one to know um, and fighters are the first ones to know when that day is looming or that day has kind of already arrived where they don't really have it in them anymore I remember talking to Froch about this about his second fight with Groves and I know that subsequent to that there was a rumour of the Chavez fight and he kind of half started training for it but he told me that he knew going into Wembley that that was it because he just didn't quite see the punches coming as quick in sparring as he used to saw the openings but wasn't quite able to take them in the way that he used to and he found the whole thing quite hard work and he realised that that fraction that you need had just maybe gone a little bit um, and if that's the case with Lomachenko then then he will know and, and, and if he can't beat Cambosis with the greatest respect to Cambosis I think that'll tell him that his days at that level are over and I don't see him wanting to box on unless he's at that level. But they can take some convincing because you can, you can always sell a defeat to yourself. You can always come up with a reason why it's happened. Um, and we've heard some bizarre ones down the years, but you look at fighters' records and even with the very best, quite often they'll prob- they might, might lose three of their last four. You know, they'll lose one and then they'll, they'll, they'll convince themselves why that happened. They'll go back in at the same level, they'll lose again. 
And then I think, all right, I need a bit of a reset, take a bit of a break, go in at a lower level, get a win, then step up to that high level again and lose again. And then it's only then that they think, actually, you know what, I think it might be me. Um, I, don't think, I don't think he'll do that. But yeah, it's a really long answer to a, a, a good question. But yeah, I think if he does lose to Cambosis, I think that could be it. And in terms of sort of the boxing world at the moment, this is probably the busiest month that we're going to have. It's probably started two weeks ago with... Uh, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia. It was a bit of a crazy build-up, a crazy fight night, and it seems to be getting worse now with the positive tests. Do you think it's a bad luck for the sport, though? Yeah, always. You know, when when positive tests are returned, it's always a bad luck. It's uh, you have to be realistic in in any sport, particularly in ones based around speed and stamina and strength and explosivity. People are going to be taking performance-enhancing drugs. It's not, it's not realistic to think that they're not. And if nobody's testing positive, that doesn't mean nobody's doing it. It just means nobody's getting caught. So people getting caught in one way is a good thing because it needs to happen. Otherwise, you know, what are we all doing here, really? Um, but it's just a way that people can try and brush it off now. Like it doesn't really matter and nothing to see here. I'm a big enough name that this doesn't really affect me. And that can't, you know, if boxing's going to be sustainable as a, as a sport that people take seriously, then there have to be proper deterrents for it. Um, but there aren't always. And that's, that's a real problem. I mean, I, 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 I got absolutely hammered for it by a load of Americans on Twitter, but I, um, I had a big problem with him missing the weight. I was because, about to bring that up. That's, yeah, that's the worst because, part of that. Because yeah. he, he missed it by a mile, and you know you're going to miss it by that far if you miss it by that far. And rather than tell Haney, um, listen, two weeks out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do 143 because it's going to be unsafe for me to do anything lower. You can do 143 too. And Haney would definitely have taken that, wouldn't he? Um, and that would have been fair. As it was, it, it just he, he, he cheated, essentially, by not fulfilling his obligation to make the weight that they'd agreed and then not telling him that he wasn't going to be able to make it and people were talking about oh well Haney's a weight bully and this and that yeah he rehydrates and goes up alarmingly in weight but he makes the weight so it wasn't the same but um yeah I was <sighs> how do you take the win seriously when you've agreed to something and then you don't do it because on the night we had a welterweight against a super lightweight and that's not what was supposed to happen I think we're uh, going to have to wrap, wrap up because we're the last ones in the stadium. But uh, thanks for taking the time to have this long chat with us. I'm sure we'll catch up. We've still got loads to speak about. All right, we'll get uh, the Usyk, on yeah, yeah, a quick yeah, yeah, uh, Usyk Fury out. prediction if we can. So I, I was slightly reluctant to give too, too bold a prediction if, when, when I'm commentating on it. But I do. I have always felt that, that Fury is big enough to make the size count against Usyk um, in a way that not many people, uh, in a way that I don't think anybody else would be. Um, so I do still make him a slight favourite, but but not as big a favourite as I did probably three or four years ago. Um, that's partly due to the performance against Nganu, although that could turn out to be a blessing in disguise because it could, could have refocused him and all that kind of thing. Um, but it's... These are just two kind of freakish fighters for heavyweights, really, in terms of the skill sets they've got. So I'm not entirely sure what we're going to see. Um, I kind of feel like it might well be points and it might well be close. And the fact that there's already a rematch clause in place might not be the worst thing, even though, me included, we've moaned quite a bit about rematches in the last few years because we've had quite a few that we just didn't we didn't need to see. But then again, I felt like we didn't really need to see the third fight against Wilder. And then uh, I was lucky enough to go to that and it was amazing. So, you know, what do, what do we really know? Uh, just as well, quickly, before we finish up, we know we've got a book coming out on the 31st of May, uh, The Knockout. If you just want to, we'll have a longer chat probably in the future about the book. But if you want to just speak about that quickly and what the book is about. Great. Yeah, it's... Um yeah, the knockout, sport's most decisive moment, it's called. So I really look at the knockout, why it's this massive moment in sport, how it's unlike anything else in sport, the effect it has on, on all of us, basically. The effect it has on someone who, who delivers it, the effect it has on someone who has it happen to them, how do they get over it, you know, what does it do to us watching it? Um, 
what's it like at ringside, seeing it. And a lot of it's about the mentality of, of boxing. Um, how do you even get in there in the first place when, when you know that that is something that could happen to you? Um, the level of acceptance you have to have that this is something that could happen and how you go about just squaring yourself with that. It's, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. it. Kind of, my main guys in it really, Tony Bellew, David Hay, um, Ricky Hatton, um, Amir Khan, Carl Froch, uh, Matt Macklin, um, Johnny Nelson. There's loads of people in it. And, that, and everybody was great. They were really generous with their time. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I had to read it all back for an audio recording the other week and I, and, and I got to the end of it and I thought, yeah, I think I still think this is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, interesting. so that's a good sign. And yeah, it's out at the end of May. You can get it pre-order on Amazon at the minute and then it, hopefully it'll be in lots of places after that. Yeah, we're really, uh, definitely looking forward to reading it and thanks for sitting down with us today and having this chat. No problem.